Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, back with Kerbal Space Program, and you all better pack your bags because we're going to Jewel. That's right, this is my first video since the .023 update, and last video I said I would be doing the most ambitious mission I've ever done. And that's no joke, this mission today is to go back to Jewel, and not just to orbit like I have before, but to send a mothership. Now what do I mean by mothership? Pretty simple. I started to build this in .22, and it is a multi-stage rocket unit. I do have a, a planetary transfer module. I do have a lander because I want to do an actual landing and sample return from one of the Julian moons. But I, what's also not pictures that I want to drone things as well. So we're going to hit the Jewel system and we are going to hit it hard, quite hard. So let's start by talking about the mission profile a little bit. There are four steps to this mission. First off, send a multi-stage orbital station to Joule, also known as the mothership. I have the phase angle and required delta V there because those are going to be important considerations later. Second, to do a live landing and sample return from Lathe, which is a moon that we'll be talking about a little bit. Number three, launch surface probes to other moons and into Joule. Now there's rumors that there is maybe like one tiny little sliver of land that you can land on Joule with, but we're not going to worry about that so much. It's just send a drone in or a probe into the planetary atmosphere and see how far it can go, maybe grab a little bit of science. Otherwise, I do want to land some probes onto other planets. Now with the point two three update, I can't spam science and collect all the science I can from there, but at least it is a nice little achievement to have something on each of the moons. And then four return samples, data, and crew intact to Kerbin because we want to actually survive this mission. That would be nice. It'd have all the science back there. I would get more than enough science to fill out the tech tree. I'm actually pretty close already. But this is more about pride, exploration, and everything else. So to get started, let's go ahead and take a look at some different orbital bodies. And these are some important considerations to keep in mind. The first I'm going to look at is Kerbin. This is a system you're familiar with. Note the uh, Cloud City Lights mod. It's beautiful. It's great. You can see the skybox I added in the background. That's thanks to the World Replacer mod. You'll see some of the first footage videos for this series. Don't have it in there. It comes in later. Just a disclaimer right now. Anyway, Kerbin, things to keep in mind is that where I'm going to be flying to, Kerbin is kind of a good standard unit to think about in terms of both the gravitational pull and in terms of the atmosphere. That is because the first place that I want to go to, kind of the jewel of the Julian system, and the reason I'm going is Lathe. Lathe is a planet that has water, it has continents, I do want to do a land landing on there because it has an atmosphere. And that is very important because at least in terms of uh, exploration from uh, previous Kerbin astronomers, the idea is that, oh, is can you live on Lathe? What's up with Lathe? Apparently, they are good at looking at things in the sky and kind of getting spots and specs, but mass spectrometry does not seem to be in the Kerbin's vocabulary because they can't just point and say, oh wait, the atmosphere has this or that. So I do want to go make a surface landing to investigate Lathe and have somebody land on there, get samples in return. Next, however, there are other moons to explore. That would include Val, which shouldn't be too terribly difficult to land on. Its gravity is really, really low, and a probe should not have too much trouble getting in there. And then you also have the next moon in the series, that would be Tylo. Tylo, on the other hand, is going to be a pain in the butt. And in fact, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if the probe ice in there just crashes, because Tylo is like landing on the moon, except the moon has... Uh, more gravity than Kerbin pretty much and no atmosphere to slow you down than like Kerbin So Tylo probably the most uh, difficult place to land in the entire solar system to be perfectly honest in terms of actually landing Not necessarily getting there. That's without mods withstanding next is Bop. Bop is just an interesting little moon Note that even though it looks like in the picture here It is on an orbital same orbital plane as Joule. It's actually on an incline orbit has no atmosphere once again really light gravity actually really easy to escape on accident and then finally Paul short for pollen maybe once again I've heard that Paul has maybe one of the most interesting uh, surfaces or ground scatters in the Kerbin system so I'm interested to see that but once again should be pretty easy to land probes on most of these places other than Tylo but my goal is to get a probe into each of these bodies just to explore space because what is Kerbal Space Program about? Not just collecting science, but spreading out the future for Kerbal Kind. Will there be a colony on Lathe in the future? Well, we got to do this mission first to lay the groundwork. And that's what this series is all about, laying the groundwork. Now, once again, I did say that I did have 
a mothership that I had built previously. This is the .22 footage of it, and you can see it out in space. It got out there no problem. You'll notice the one thing that's missing from here that I do want to add in for the .23 update is the science lab, and that's going to be something that I want to put on the lander so I can reprocess science as much as possible when I'm on length. And right now this is just a test sequence of putting the lander down. But as you can see from the video here, I want you to note the target velocity is 0.3. I actually ran into some interesting bugs trying to do this landing. This is from 0.22 again, where for some reason my target velocity was stuck. I couldn't control anything. Apparently uh, John Michael Kerman breaks things when he tries to land. But pretty much going into this new patch, I do want to add... Uh, something that adds a little bit more weight, mass, and just volume to my ship. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of a redesign. But you can see me just trying to get things under control because, yeah, this is a pretty nasty bug. I just thought it was interesting to show because my target velocity is not what it should be. It's actually not updating at all. So that said, that's the past. We're going to go ahead and look into the future. And that future being the redesigned lander can because much like my uh, other parts of the series which you may have seen, I want to do this not just launching things blindly up into space. I want to do test, reiteration, make sure that things work. But you can see I have the science lab in the middle. That's new to point two three. It lets you uh, boost what you transmit, boost research. And point two three also fixed the ability to constantly spam science modules to collect maximum science because it used to be that uh, you can send unmanned probes and just max out your science way more efficiently. But that's not the case anymore. You can see I'm doing the thing that I've done in the past with just the tri-rocket launcher. And I have a lot of fuel. This is a pretty hefty, heavy craft. And it is going to be strapped on top of another craft. But, of course, I do want to have my good test pilots in there. Unfortunately, this still does bug out from time to time where it will default putting Jebediah, Bill, and Bob into there. And maybe I should park them somewhere else. But right now, let's go ahead and test launch this tripod lander, which you can see there's one already on the field, because why not? So here we go, test launch, and you'll see that I do quite a bit of time acceleration for this. My first test is just going to be to go straight up and straight down. You can see the staging here. Because landing on lathe, yes, I am going to be able to take advantage of the atmosphere a little bit. The atmosphere is similar in composition to Kerbals, but not, or Kerbins, but not quite the same. It's a little denser, but it's a lot shorter. So parachutes are going to do some work. And you can see that I'm working with parachutes right here. But more important thing is you can see Minmus poking up from the sky a little bit. Is that I got to test and see how this craft does with mostly fuel, full fuel tanks. And in fact, this may not be the best test because I burned so much fuel getting up there. But that's the idea. This craft needs to be able to make a solid landing with not too much speed. Oh, well... Uh, I broke two engines. If that were to happen on lathe, I would pretty much be screwed. And that's not what we want, so I would call this test a failure. So, launch it again! There we go. This is the second kind of test that I did, and you can see I'm separating stages here. And technically, th that's not great for going down, but we're not doing a straight up and down test. I want to see just how far I can punch into the atmosphere. Now, it takes about 4,500 delta V to actually... Or, or get into an orbital trajectory around Kerbin. And you don't need nearly that much to get around Lathe. Now, technically, the Kerbins in this career mode space center don't technically know how much it takes for Lathe, but just my knowledge of the game and resources on Google, thanks Google, uh, tell me it doesn't take nearly as much. But right there, I didn't quite have enough fuel to make it work. And you can see I'm doing launches from extended landing legs, another nice feature in point oh two three. But here I go, trying again with the test just to do a straight burn up as high as I can, up, up, up. And then we're just going to see if we can do the gravity turn again. As you can see, Bill and Jeb have jumped back into my vehicle. I've had multiple fails just in terms of getting these rockets up, getting them to move. And I don't necessarily want to have something where can I orbit all the way, but I do want to see if I can design a rocket that will actually get high enough into the atmosphere. If this can make it to about 70,000 meters, that's probably going to be enough to escape Kerbin, or not Kerbin, Lathe. And Lathe is kind of your goal here, because while I do have a probe going around Jewel that can see various things around the system, I, I can't just cheat and say, hey, well, if I make it like this exactly, we're going to wing it and make it work, because I have one orbiter just 
going around the planet. But you can see here, at least I'm increasing my altitude just a little bit. This is more promising than the last launch. I'm getting a lot of work from my LV-909s again because those are nice boosters to have. But you can see once again, I'm getting, I'm breaking through the two layers of the atmosphere. And right now I'm at 33, 34, 35. And that's decent, but it doesn't get me out of Lathe's atmosphere. So it does seem like I could do okay with this design. Not perfect, maybe I could refine the launch mechanics just a little bit more, but you see I have my lander legs. And as much as I'd like to test a land landing on this, it looks like I'm gonna be going into the drink and this ship is not designed for going into water and that's going to be one of the bigger challenges that I face going to Lathe because Lathe has a lot of islands it does not have a lot of land surface to land on you have to be really precise with where you're trying to land and if I screw it up the entire mission could go down into the drink because once again my ship is not at all designed to kind of come back from the water because it's just a big long tube so here we go. Not doing a lot of physical time acceleration this time, just letting it drop down. And look, my ship survives. It actually holds up with the parachutes pretty well. I'll take it. So just going down, going down, and crash and fall apart. All right, so I'm going to test one more time here. Like I said, I do a lot of testing and a lot of iteration in this video. And you can see this time I've replaced the LV-909s with some Rocket Max rockets. I forget the actual call numbers, but the bigger ones, I have the ones with thrust vectoring, on the outside and I have the big I think LV 30s on the inside so I want more push I want more umph unfortunately they're way more fuel hungry but you can see right away I'm already at 10,000 this is way more promising just fly a lot higher and you can see yep this is this is gonna work much better right there before with the LV 909s they're good I love them they're very fuel efficient but I need power to actually get through the atmosphere if this were flying off of somewhere that didn't have atmosphere and it didn't matter that's okay but right there you can see beautiful apple apps and an orbit that I'm probably going to screw up because I've forgotten the art of making a perfect orbit. But there we go, Bill and Jeb once again being the test pilots. I don't necessarily want them to be test pilots, that's why I got the rookies. But testing out my little science modules as well. Unfortunately, nobody is in the lander or is in the science module and you need two people to actually control it. I learned way later, but look, random ladders on the side because building things is special and fun. But there we go. Just going to go ahead and see if I can burn myself into an orbit. Now, you may be saying to yourself, I didn't get into a full orbit and I'm out of fuel. This design has failed. And that's not true at all. Because the idea is that I do have a mothership floating around as long as I can get to an orbit around Lathe, which has a much smaller sphere of influence than Kerbin and has a much shorter atmosphere than Kerbin. I should be able to, with this, which I probably spent about 4,000 Delta V just to get up here, I should be able to make it with this craft. And that's all you can really bank on at this point. You test, you test, you test, and then you see if you can make it. So now the next question is, can this craft actually land? Go ahead and put up the solar panels because I'm dumb and didn't put action groups. And once again, am I really going to be making an aquatic landing? Again, I... That's a little frustrating. I missed, I overshoot that. I wasn't really aiming for it, but there we go. There's a peninsula. I might make it to the peninsula. I might make it to the peninsula. You can see the landing flag from a rescue mission in the past. That's where we're alive. That was a wonderful dramatic moon rescue. But right now, it's just going to be going into the drink. I'm not going to make it. So there we go. You can see uh, multiple fuel tanks on the bottom. And right away, there is a design flaw. If you didn't catch that, that's my uh, landing gears. Well, first off, my engines fell, so that solves the problem of the landing gears. But my landing gears actually uh, did not extend past my engine. So you can see the stats here. Lots of problems. As much as people are like, yeah, Kerbal Space Program, crash, crash, boom, boom. Successful mission. I don't know if you could exactly label that test as a success. I got up, but you know what? It's success enough. I can figure out the iterations as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and add this onto my vehicle here you can see the whole mothership it is a gigantic monstrosity it has over 600 parts a lot of them struts but i am going for the liquid fuel engine here but yeah there we go just there's the i'm debating between the 45 and the 30. go ahead and put the big ones on there get ladders on there have to flip the parts around you can use the wasad and uh, eq keys to flip all those parts around but there we go i have the mothership right there, flip those landing gears around because that is very important. 
And look at that. I have a mothership that maybe can be built. Now I had tested this before without the heavier uh, part on there or without the actual extra stuff on there to see if it'll fly. But there we go. This is the mothership. And in the next episode, what I'm going to be doing is to test and see, can we make the mothership work? Can it actually fly? But for now, this is way to fail. That's it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you liked what you saw, feel free to subscribe. We're going to be continuing with more mothership jewel in the next episode where we will be seeing, do we have a viable mothership and can it even do something like send stuff to the moon? That's it for now. Take care.